Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan, you're in my corner and I have a very special guest in the corner that came all the way from the future. Would you like to introduce yourself to the masses? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Shannon McCormick. And it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, it was kind of funny during the, re the research that I normally do when I'm looking up to, you know, see what you've done, because Chris schedules these people and I don't get the notice until, you know, before it's up on the website. So. Right. 30 seconds before air. <laughs> Sometimes it has happened, sadly. But no, I had a little bit more time with that, and it was kind of funny because I didn't have enough time to watch the, I think, three or four seasons of Red vs. Blue that I'm, <laughs> I'm missing. But I was able to ask everyone about your character, and the same moment kept coming up with your, with your character from Red vs. Blue. Oh, yeah? It was the one where Caboose throws a grenade. It's the worst throw ever of all time. Yeah, I'm like, can you tell me about the character? And it's like, yeah, he's a straight man. There's like, for example, Caboose will throw a grenade and it's, yeah, and I'll finish the sentence for them. It's the worst throw of all time. Can you tell me anything else about the character? Yeah, that's it. That's him in a nutshell. <laughs> hey, one second. Uh, here's, my, uh, here's my guest here. I need to... Hey, buddy, I'm, on, I'm doing a radio interview. You want to go uh, just hang out and read in the back? That's my son. Emmett, you want to say hi? Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he's cute. <laughs> yeah, he's super cute. He's almost nine. Aw. Well, I, I will say I don't have much experience with kids because I just turned 21. So I That's just, okay. just kind of got from the kid section, and I think Good. now I'm in the teenage seat. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. you you're, yeah, enjoy your youth. <laughs> well, in, in terms of uh, Red vs. Blue, I did hear that your character can be kind of a douchebag. Uh, yeah, it, it really depends. Uh, when I uh, took a kind of more serious turn um, with the Recovery One uh, miniseries and then all of the R-named seasons that f uh, came after that, and I can't do them in the, uh, in the right order, but... Um, basically starting with season six onwards, uh, they took a more serious turn and I'm kind of the, the main straight man character in the show. So uh, often I'm exasperated by the incompetence of uh, the, the reds and the blues. Um, and so sometimes, yes, a lot of times that's funny and, uh, and then I'm, I'm kind of the jerk. So the hard ass, um, but it's still, you know, it's still funny. So, definitely, and I I can understand that. I mean, there has to be a grounded character, or else all all go to crap. <laughs> right, exactly. And now one of the which, you know what? Oh no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is now uh, starting with season nine, uh, which uh, just finished up last year, and we're getting ready to go into season ten. We've actually started recording a bunch of it, but. Uh, uh, none of season 10 has aired yet. One of the fun things is these are all like uh, pre prequel seasons, uh, flashback seasons. So you get to see Agent Washington uh, in his own milieu amongst the, um, amongst the freelancer agents. And he's kind of the cut up comic relief character uh, in a way that when he's with the Reds and the Blues, he's kind of the hard ass. But uh, it, it's fun to get to play both sides. You know, I get to be the kind of the funny quipping guy because I'm much less serious than some of the other characters that are around me uh, in, in my, you know, in the prequel seasons. Well, now, one of the interesting things I saw over on the website Red vs. Blue is you actually did some live action shorts with some of the members there. Yeah. And those were hilarious. But I have to wonder how did the, how did you how were you in like a basically a tub or a box of ice without freezing your butt off? Uh, so they made this case. It was cold. Uh, they made this case, and I was under this sort of shelving of bubble wrap uh, with my head poking out, and so then the ice was on top of that. So it really looked like I was buried in ice, uh, but there was very little of it that was actually in contact with me. So, so you were A-OK -okay by the end of it? You didn't oh, feel I was any... Fine. Okay. <laughs> I, I had to... It, it, sorry. it was worse when the ice started... I'm sorry. Yeah, it was worse when the ice started melting a little bit, and then it 
would kind of leak down through the seams in various places. Uh, so actually, the warmer it got, the worse it was. That's kind of a surprise, but good to know for the future in case you want to bury if your... It, if anybody's looking to bury their friends in ice for a comedy short, um, <laughs> yeah, just, just know that the warmer it gets, it can actually be bad. And, and that kind of scared me, too. I was like, no, are they going to kill him off already? But no, you came back and you got your revenge, which I very much liked. I got my revenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now when you do the, uh, the those sort of shorts, do they just ask you to do that when you're in for the vocal recording? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I haven't done any of the uh, uh, Rooster Teeth uh, shorts in a long time. I mean, I did those two in season one, and they wrote those, you know, they, they wrote those sketches specifically, I guess, with me in mind to come in and play that character play myself uh in that role and yeah they just said hey you know we're gonna be shooting some uh sh some shorts in the next couple of weeks do you you know do you have some availability and can you come in so it's not quite as uh just off the cuff of oh hey you're here you want to do something uh it's a little you know it's planned out but uh, but yeah it just kind of came up that they they were working on this season of uh of live action stuff and they asked me to participate in a couple of them well, hopefully we see you in more because the ones that I saw were hilarious. Wait, it, it, start a petition. Write the write the write Bernie. No, I no, whatever. It's all good. We uh, can get I, the listeners on that. Yeah, come on, come on, uh, come on, listeners. <laughs> they're, they're, they listen usually to our commands, so we can use them for that. I mean, right. I mean, ask them, ask them. Yes. Yeah. No, I. It's it's all good, and I, there's there's a couple of uh, there's a couple things on the horizon some live action stuff with those guys uh, that I probably can't talk about too much, but uh, I'll be, I'll be doing more things with, uh, with those guys. So you, you've not seen the last of my face over on uh, the uh, red versus blue side or the, the rooster teeth side. Very cool. And now in terms of uh, live action versus voiceover, is there one that you prefer? Hmm. 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 I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, they, I think they both have, they each have their, their pluses. I mean, th one of the great things about doing voiceover is it, it can be, you can do a lot very quickly. Uh, I mean, I did, uh, you know, they got their act together and really sort of did a lot of pre-production work. And for season 10, I did all of my lines for the whole season, like two hours worth of content in, you know, not very much time at all. So there's something that's kind of cool about the um, the expediency with which you can do voice acting, and you know it doesn't really matter what you look like; you can just roll in, and it's you know whatever, uh, as long as your voice is okay and you're up for you know doing stuff with your voice. That's great, uh, you know, and there's just a lot more to worry about in a live action shot, you know, uh, and it can take a lot longer because you're everybody's acting together in the same space. You got to wait for lighting. You got to make sure all the effects work and all of that. So it can, it can take a lot longer and there's a lot of um, hurry up and wait that goes into filming uh, live and stuff. At the same time, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, you, you're, you're not just hidden behind uh, a character on a screen, but it's, you're playing, you know, so you play, you are there on, on camera. So, you know, it's a little bit more, notoriety can go along with that. Um, so they both have their pluses. And I would think with the lights, um, I'm a, well, they might not use makeup on you, but I hear for some guys they, ha they still have to use makeup. So that with the lights and the costumes, if there is any, you know, over the top costumes, I think that would be a pain in the butt, personally. It's actually, you know, I kind of like the whole process. I, l I enjoy having makeup applied uh, for the purposes of doing a film. Uh, and you'll notice, like, in the, uh, in the shorts, like in the second one, I mean, I was not really that pale. Uh, I was not really that cold. There was a lot of makeup that went on to make me look that cold. And, uh, and then I also played, I, did, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, the, uh, the great face in their Captain Dynamic series. So as a bad guy, sort of looked like a skeleton-ish, zombie-like King Tut kind of supervillain. Uh, and there was a lot of makeup for that too. So I kind of I like the whole process of that. 
Well, I hear for some of some of the makeup, you have to get there really early, and you have to sit in a chair for like three hours. But I'm assuming for stuff like the the short where you came back from Antarctica or wherever it was, it wasn't yeah. a three hour process. No, no, I've never done anything that extensive where I have to be, you know, sitting in a chair to be, you know, transformed into a werewolf or whatever, and it takes three hours. Never had anything that extensive, and I can imagine, especially if you were a an actor who was. Um, playing a role like that on a regular basis, you know, and you, that was your job and you went in and every day and had that done, it would get a little tedious. You know, the, the folks in Avatar, I'm sure got a little tired of being painted blue. Yeah, I can imagine that. But for anyone who wants to paint their face, you've got about, well, three minutes. So keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan and we'll come back with our special guest in a few moments. Hi, I'm the Celtic Guardian, but you guys can call me Dave. When I'm not busy being sacrificed in order to summon monsters that are halfway useful, I like to listen to 918 The Fan, one of the hottest online radio shows on the worldwide internet highway. Thing, did I mention I have like 1,400 attack points? That's a big deal in my world, you know. Plus, I have a sword. Does the Blue-Eyes White Dragon have a sword? No. Fuck the Blue-Eyes White Dragon. Seriously. Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. I am still here and still alive, so I assume my guest is still here and still alive. Are you? I am. Okay. I am. I'm still here and alive. See, we didn't freeze him to make him go back in the future, because that's how time travel works. I think. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking a little bit behind the scenes about it, but I was wondering, are there any projects that you're working on that you can talk about, or anything that recently came out that you want the listeners to know about? Um, yeah, well, so I have, uh, uh, for, for the past year or so, I've been a voiceover actor on uh, DC Universe Online, um, and so if anybody plays that game uh, and has gone on any missions in that game, things like that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out there as one of the voices. And, and as the game continues to add expansion packs and, and new levels and things like that, I'm, I'm, on, the, uh, I'm on that. Oh, hold on, my son has asked me a question. <laughs> Who? No, say, say no. Yeah, tell him I'm here and, and answer something. Okay, sorry, guys. No biggie. <laughs> uh, yeah, so DC Universe Online. Uh, I'm going in later this month to record some stuff. I don't know when I'm recording, but uh, but I'll be doing some recording on that. Very cool. I actually got to play that in the beta, I believe, for PlayStation 3. And, I ma you know, I made a flying character, but I couldn't figure out how to get her to not fly once she was in the air. <laughs> but well, I was, you must have set some parameters wrong early on. You made her perpetually flying. Yes, but I really did like the game. I thought it was a lot of fun. And and for anyone who hasn't tried it, I highly recommend it. Yeah, it's cool. I've got to play some cool characters. Mostly bad guys, um, but uh, I, I have some, seem to have something of a specialty in playing villains. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I was actually going to make that comment. It seems like you're either playing someone who's mean or a bad guy or an anti-hero. You're never, you're never like the, the cheery guy of the group it seems like yeah i don't know because i'm a pretty friendly guy i mean i'm a like a nice person and i think people who know me would say in general i'm pretty upbeat i mean i do have maybe kind of a a, a sinister edge now and again but um but i'm not like you don't you don't see me and go that guy's a villain i i think it, it it's something it has something to do with the timbre of my voice it's maybe not quite uh, resonant or beefy enough to pull off your kind of typical hero and I can do a lot of different voices and that kind of flexibility I think is helpful in doing villains. Well you have to consider in anime the main hero is usually like a teenage yeah let's get him and then in like western video games it's like a gruffy sort of uh, I don't I don't know just a gruffy gorilla man usually. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Right, a little more, yeah, a little more gruff sounding than, than my voice is. And, uh, and villains often are just a lot more fun to play. I mean, they get all the juicy lines, and they, uh, they get to revel in being evil, whereas a lot of times 
the hero roles are kind of boring because they suffer a lot before they are, you know, triumphant. So, uh, so I don't have a problem with playing villains, but I, but I definitely seem to get cast as a lot of them. And you get to do the evil laugh. I think that's the major plus. Yeah, exactly. I don't do that many evil laughs, but, uh, uh, but I, I, I certainly have. I certainly have done an evil laugh in my day. Well, are there any other projects that are coming down the pipeline? Um, that people can see readily. I mean, there's like some stuff in the works, you know, but nothing that people can see yet. Um, I'm in a live action uh, video series that's not produced by Rooster Teeth, but by a different um, film company here in Austin, Texas. Uh, but people can't see it yet because it's still being put together. But uh, I play the bad guy in that one, too. Um, <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and, and that'll be a lot of fun, and I think people will like it. It's actually, um, if people have seen um, any of the short films made by Blue Goggles uh, films, it's, it's those guys. They, um, they've, had, they've had a lot of luck. They've been doing monthly uh, short comedy films based on new video game releases um, for the past oh, five or six months. They had a pretty popular one a couple months back about Skyrim called Skyrim Intervention. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's like a little short comedy film about a guy who's so completely addicted to, to playing Skyrim that uh, his, his friends and family have to do an intervention on him. And uh, it goes from there. And, it, you know, it got a lot of play because that game was so popular that uh, I think a lot of people could, could both relate to it and just were interested in it because it had the word Skyrim in it. Um, anyway, th- those guys have put together a, uh, what I think is going to be a pretty sweet uh, live-action video series, but it's, uh, it's, not, it's not out there yet. Um, but, uh, but people will know about it when it is. Definitely. And for the listeners out there that want to stalk you in a nice way and keep updated, is there any place on the interwebs where you do that, like social networking? Yeah, uh, so people can find me on Twitter. Um, yeah, I think if you look me up by my name, you can find me. Uh, but my handle is Sad Ogre, S A D O G R E. Um, so people can you can find me if you just type in my Twitter handle. Uh, and then I'm on uh, I'm on Facebook too, and uh, I have a policy that unless unless somebody's like super creepy intentionally before they add me. I will add anybody on Facebook. I, it's, it's all good. Like, you know, I think if anybody's going to go out of their way to add me as a, as a friend, as a, as a fan of my work, I owe it to them to, to connect to them. So if anybody wants to send me a, a friend request on Facebook, they can find me. Well, as long as you don't post pictures of your boobs on Facebook, I think you'll be fine. <laughs> I, I'm good. I don't, yeah, well, yes. And, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a plenty of shade of McCormick's out there, but, um, but people, I'm the bald one. I'm the I'm the male bald one, so uh, people should be able to find me that way. And I'd be surprised if they couldn't find it with that description. Because I looked, I look, because I, I I looked through all of all of the ones with that name, and you were the only one I could find that was bald. So that's me. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's me. Yep, you got it. And now, do you ever get a chance to go to any of the geeky events? You know, things like conventions or anything like that. So, uh, so I went to RTX last year, which is here in Austin. Uh, I'll be at RTX again this year. And then uh, the, the Rooster Teeth guys are talking about uh, taking me to a couple of conventions um, later this year. I, was at, I originally was maybe going to be going to PAX East, uh, and that didn't work out for some timing reasons. But hopefully I will be coming to some conventions uh, later in the year where people can can meet me in person, and they can friend me in person. <laughs> I, I, well, friending. I just imagined like a sim esque. Oh, you've been friends. You're now friends. You know. There's a little something pops up right exactly right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, make sure to let us know, and we'll let the listeners know. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely will. I I don't know yet. Uh, the again, have your fans, Bug, Bernie, and the gang at Rooster Teeth to make sure that they have assigned me to some conventions. It's basically just a question of timing and figuring out which ones they want to take me to, but they haven't, they haven't sorted that all out yet. Which is understandable. There's a lot that goes into planning for a convention, even uh, if you're just going to one. No doubt, man. No doubt. I mean, for I, I believe we have 
all because we go to about 20 to 30 conventions a year and we have everything up to I believe June squared away with like plane tickets and hotels and things like that but yeah. I, I have to constantly stay on top of it if I get behind it's like no right exactly right 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 and when you guys go do you go as uh, I mean are you there as presenters or are you there as media like what are you what's your a little of both it depends on the convention. Sometimes we go as press and sometimes we go as guests and we're invited. With uh, press conventions, those are usually the bigger ones that, you know, they announce the latest licenses in anime or things like that. Or the Consumer Electronics Show, bigger, you know, huge shows like that that usually only cater to press. Right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, we, we've we been getting more guest requests, so hopefully we'll be in the neck of the woods and hopefully we'll be at a convention together. Yeah, hey, that would be awesome. That would be very awesome. And now, since we're nearing the end of this interview, we actually have a tradition here on 91.8 The Fan. Okay. And I was wondering if you'd be willing to participate. Okay. Well, okay, wow. Uh, I will say yes, uh, <laughs> even though I don't know what it is yet. We do that on purpose. We basically I ask if you would be willing to do a bump for us. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. The trick of it, however, is that we do the bumps live on air. Okay, you got it. Oh, he's all for it. Sweet. Usually we, we scare people off with that one. So, <laughs> Are you going to feed me the lines? Yes, I am gonna, I'm going to give you what you're going to say. Basically, we ask if you could say, Hello, my name is... You put your name there. I do this. You can name... Oh, what's happening? Oh, no. What's happening? Okay. okay. You can put, um, basically, hello. Uh, my name is this. You put what your name is. Um, I do this, like, as in what characters you are, or that you're an actor, whatever you want to put there. That's free range for you. Okay. And you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Perfect. That's easy. All right. So whenever you're ready, then. Okay. Hello, this is Shannon McCormick. I'm an agent Washington on Red vs. Blue, and you're listening to 91.8 The Fan. See, that was easy. Wow. Was he, easy. he didn't trip up at all. You should, no. you, you'd be surprised. We have voice actors who come on, and they're just like, I don't know, this is really hard. This is live. What? Come on, they're voice actors. you got to be a pro, dude. <laughs> Send them my way. I will tell them that they're not being professional enough. Well, they, they don't have, I guess they, it's because some... They don't voice, have a script? Yeah, they don't have it in front of them, and I guess it yeah. just gets programmed into their head. Right, right. But is there is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? No, stay cool. Uh, keep you know supporting uh, cool uh, internet culture stuff and uh, have fun. Well, thank you very much for this. This was a lot of fun. Awesome, thank you so much. And for any of the listeners out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. It'll be up on the website within the next few days. So keep it tuned to ninety one point eight The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't. <laughs>